welcome to another episode of Fangirls Unleashed. We're here at the third annual Silicon Valley Comic Con. It's a three-day celebration of geek culture, science, and technology. So join us as we check out some of the comics, cosplayers, artists, and scientists. John and Mary are themselves elemental masters, and they take the cases that Sherlock won't because they're magic, and Sherlock doesn't believe in that ferret at all. Uh, yeah, so I do a webcomic called Bummer Corp. It's about anxiety and depression, and uh, it's like a humor comic poking fun of that in like a short format of uh, like once a week gag jokes. Um, so I'm in the Bay Area, uh, so I go to a lot of the cons in the area anyway. But uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con is new and exciting and big, and uh, my friend Ali, who I'm sharing a table with, wanted to split the table with me, so I decided to give it a shot. I was here last year, but uh, we were kind of in the downstairs area, so I wanted to try the, the full Artist Alley experience. I went to Fanime last year, which is also here. Um, yeah, and that kind of just inspired me. I'd been doodling on the side and watching anime and playing video games forever, and then I saw other people doing this, and I was like, I can... I can do this, I can get out here. So it inspired me to take that next step. Favorite part about being here? Um, For me, it's people watching. Um, everybody <laughs> with really cool costumes um, and the fan engagement. Like, we get a lot of booth interaction. So just meeting the people, um, sharing Instagrams, uh, just getting to know everybody. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely that, because we do usually do uh, anime conventions, so we see a totally different crowd here, so all the costumes are different than what we normally see. All the cosplay is like taken to a different level. I've seen so many stormtroopers in full <laughs> costume, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, just getting a di different atmosphere all together. A first trip? Why does everyone... Here, come here. Let's do it together. You're going to get a combo shot. Ready? First grip. I want to tell you is this what's important about this is Star Trek was one of our best fantasies of the future and what she has been able to do really what she's been able to do is to make sure that we have been able to live toward that fantasy so thank you so much thank you. Thank you. now some people might ask or say that my career in space exploration really began when I got aboard the space shuttle on a warm September afternoon in 1992 at Kennedy Space Flight Center. And some others might say, well, it's when I got the call from the astronaut office while I was a doctor in Los Angeles, literally in between seeing patients, they called and they said, um, are you still interested in the astronaut program? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I actually think it began way before then. It began with a very simple act when I was a little girl. It began with looking up at the sky and finally realizing I was going to go there. I assumed I would go into space. I didn't care whether there had been any people up there ever at all or whether or not I would be the first one up there. It didn't matter. And I didn't worry about whether or not there hadn't been any women up in space or not. I just knew that I had the right and I had the ability to go there. And in fact, let me tell you a little bit, okay? Let me tell you a little bit. 
looking around this conference and looking on television, most of the robots, or not most, many of them, there is a desire to make them look like people instead of having the essence of a robotic machine. They copy ourselves, we make them in our image. Don't you find that a strange, a strange path to take? Well, there's the other point of view, which is to digitize us. Mm -hmm. You realize that already in Silicon Valley, uh, companies are saying that we can digitize everything known about you, your credit card transactions, your Instagram photographs, your emails, and create a reasonable approximation of you. And then once we have the Connectome project finished by the end of the century, the Connectome project will map. Tell me what that is. Brain. I don't know what that is. That is a process to map every neuron of the living brain, complete map of the human brain. At that point, if you die, then of course your body decomposes, but the Connectome lives on and lives on forever. Your memories, your sensations. I mean, I would love the opportunity to talk to Einstein. One day, somebody will digitize Einstein, his thoughts, his writings, his videotapes, and create an avatar, a three-dimensional avatar that you can talk to and have a delightful conversation with Einstein. In fact, one of the days, our great-great-great-grandkids may see a digitized version of us and want to talk to their famous ancestor and talk to you as a, as a holographic image. I don't think you know my grandchildren. <laughs> Instagram and Facebook.